I first came across Robert's work when I was at uni and sort of fell deeply in love really. The moments of intimacy he creates, I just think they're incredibly brave and quite risky to do on stage. And to combine the visually bold, the viscerally bold, the formally daring and the humane and the detailed and the compassionate, that's startling. For, for me, I love what happens next with Robert's work, the sense of choices that, that people make. Playwrights love Robert Holman. Whenever I meet a younger writer of someone who's just starting out, I give them Robert's plays. I first encountered Robert's work in a little bookshop and uh, like I often do with plays, I pull them out and read the first few pages and see if I'm compelled to carry on and I think I was still stood there 90 minutes later having read the whole thing through without looking up once and uh, it was making noise quietly. The first play of Robert's that I read was making noise quietly. There was something about just holding this play and it's visceral, tender language, it's artistic, poetic structure that felt like nothing I'd ever read before. Robert's, you know, commitment to sort of emotional honesty, it's sort of total and uncompromising. And it, it means it will sort of follow his characters off the end of the world, actually. And that's very, very special. You know, the number of writers, you know, that really do do that are, are few and far between. You come away from his plays feeling that you've got to know the characters in the way that you get to know a real person. There's just, a, it's just a moment or a line or a connection often between two people. I think Robert writes from a position of faith in human beings' capacity to do something extraordinary all the time. Every line of those plays, characters will take you by surprise. They will do the last thing you're expecting them to do and it will always feel emotionally truthful. Do you have to be emotionally honest in order to write with emotional honesty? Well, I don't know, but it's certainly the case that there's an emotional honesty about Robert and a quiet conviction actually about what he does. It's a remarkable thing with Robert because his visual imagination doesn't feel like it just comes out of wanting to do something fancy. Actually, it always comes out of a, of a kind of an emotional truth and, and, and moment of story as well. And that's why they have such power. There are moments in Robert's plays which uh, characters will do something or say something which is just so beautifully written and, and so poignant and so heartbreaking, it just really cuts to your core. And then there are these theatrical flourishes in his plays where the world will flood or all the magic in Jonah and Otto and the cherries in um, uh, Making Noise Quietly, these, these incredible um, visual, extraordinary, stunning, heartbreaking things which, are, which do the same thing that these beautiful lines of dialogue do um, and can only exist in theatre. It's really pure theatre. I think Robert sees everything. He has an idea, or he, he takes an image and he can see it on stage. The way he treats uh, just an ordinary living room is kind of exactly the way that he treats um, a raft in the middle of the ocean. He can see it. It's not like he's, um, uh, he's kind of got some manifesto about himself where he's saying, well, what I want to do is create um, plays with extraordinary visual images. Actually, I think the imagery kind of comes from him, and it's just as real whether it's something that we might regard as extraordinary or something that we might regard as ordinary. I think what I love about Robert's work is that he creates these moments between people and I think they're about trust and I think his characters go on a journey from not trusting themselves or anyone else to being able to trust the other person that they're with. I think as a writer, the one thing that I'm constantly drawing from Robert's plays and Robert as a person and Robert as, a, and Robert as another playwright is exactly to retain that faith in my character's capacity to surprise me as well as themselves. He's constantly being taken by surprise by the characters. They say things he's not expecting them to say. They do things he's not expecting them to do. And in learning about them, I think he learns about the world. I think Robert's had a, a really big impact on my, on my own writing. Um, I guess he gives us license to um, be much freer with what happens. I think um, when I started writing, I, I thought that uh, 
you had to write about themes and issues and start with something that you wanted to address and something you wanted to talk about. And that's a perfectly fine, valid way of writing. But um, Robert really writes from the inside out. He'll, he'll start with something very intimate and small and, and truthful and um, something emotionally really accurate. And then um, he'll just pursue that really rigorously. And that's where the play comes out of. Reading Robert's work, I've learned a bit more about seeing, seeing a scene through, actually trying to push forward all the consequences of what happens between two characters in a scene, um, pushing things forward, let, uh, you know, seeing what really, really happens um, between two people. Reading Robert's plays and seeing Robert's plays from a writer's point of view is incredibly liberating and he's kind of um, like he is in person, he's, an, he's very galvanising and he, he, he has so much um, uh, generosity and he believes in you. If, you, if you've if you written a play uh, he really believes in you and he, he wants you to stay truthful to that. I think the thing about Robert is he is he doesn't do notes. In an age of people endlessly giving writers notes and saying oh right cut act one and rewrite act three and this character doesn't have an arc. That's a bit of an anathema to Robert actually and, um, and what Robert really enjoys and, and, and what he likes to do is just to talk with writers. Robert's just incredibly generous with his time and if you ask him a question he will always think and then give you an answer. You know, he, he's, he's very open about the process of writing and there's no mystery, he doesn't try and create a mystery around it, um, which is just great because you can then decide to take or leave it. And he's a funny one, Robert. He can come over as being quite a gentle little Yorkshire soul. But don't forget, he's kind of from a farming part of the world. He's from the northeast. He's hard as they come. He's got a, a core of steel. And if he wants to win an argument, he's like a tenacious little terrier. <laughs> yeah. He won't. He won't let. let he won't unlock his jaw. <laughs> Hold on to you. He said a brilliant thing to me once. He said, "How many out of ten do you think you are as a writer?" And um, I can't remember what I said. Now it was like I said. Oh, I think I'm like six or six and a half, maybe seven even, I don't know. But, and, um, and he said something like, don't be ridiculous, you're at least an eight and you're capable of being a 10. So next time you write a play, make sure it's an eight, you know, which is brilliant. And then um, about six months ago, I found myself pulling the same trick with a younger writer, you know. <laughs> so I think Robert's kind of worried that young, writers aren't, aren't growing up trusting themselves, that they um, feel like um, they have to depend on dramaturgs and literary managements and, and readings and development days and workshops and attachment schemes um, in order to develop their work. And I, I think he kind of feels that if we as writers trusted ourselves a little bit more, that we could start taking responsibility for the work. That, that we're writing and, and, and sort of reach for the stars a bit further perhaps. In a way it's quite a, com a complex idea, trusting yourself, in a, in a way that you wouldn't necessarily um, think. Uh, and, uh, of course on one level I think it's about um, not writing from a place of fear or, or panic. And I think he understands, as much as anyone would understand, that writing from a place of fear may actually mean that you don't trust yourself to deliver what you really should be doing in a scene between the characters that you're writing. For, for me, Robert is up there with the greats. I, I, when I was really falling in love with writing and with playwrights, that was he. His was one of the ones that really stuck with me and still has stuck with me and continues to inspire me. When I read one of Robert Holman's plays, especially Making Noise Quietly, it's just a nice little reminder of how good it's possible to be at this job. I think that Robert Holman is one of the great post-war British playwrights. Um, for me, he's up there with Stoppard, Pinter, Churchill, Barker, Bond. And um, for me, it's, it's, it's um, a great moment in the British theatre that Making Noise Quietly is being revived at the Donmar. Thank you.